Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying video, I'm gonna share with you a vise that I've been using for some time now and I really like it. I think you will too, it's the Stonfo Elite. Stay tuned because I'm gonna be telling you a lot more about that in this video review. So I have to be careful whenever we're talking about fly tying vices. As I love to say, if you ask around 15 people about their favorite or their recommended vice, you're bound to get about 20 different responses. And that's 100% true because we are just connected with our fly tying vice. It's just something that we use on a regular basis and once you feel comfortable with it, it almost feels like that third arm and you're just so used to all the mechanism and at times we're almost blinded against other ones because that's our vice. So kind of think about that and let that resonate because over the years, geez, I have used a ton of different vices. For my first one, it's this just awesome vice. I don't even know its name. It basically held a hook. Didn't do much else, but it did its job really well. And I still pull it out occasionally to tie about one fly a year on it. I've gone through all kinds of different phases. I've had vices from Orvis, from Renzetti, from Regal, from brands you've never heard of. And you probably now know I have a, a nice association with Stonfo and I, I love their fly tying vices. There is no doubt about it. If you look down below in the description of this video, you'll see I've reviewed quite a few of their vices. In fact, at one point, whenever I had one of the kind of their early best vices, it was this wonderful one called the Stonfo Cayman. I looked at this vice and I said, this is my last vice for the rest of my life. And I used it, I loved it, it's sitting right here. I still use it all the time and I still love it. And then Stonfo had to do what Stonfo does and come out with the Stonfo Transformer, which I looked at and said, this is the last vice for the rest of my life. Now I'm kind of, we'll say a bit more realistic. I just love to collect vices. I mean, just like my buddy Michael Alvano, that's just part of fly tying, it's part of what I love to do. So was that vice my last? Absolutely not. But now let's kind of shift forward and talk a little bit about the Stonfo Elite and where it fits in. Before I give you a close up of the Stonfo Elite, let's just talk about where it fits in terms of the series of Stonfo vices. Because a lot of people love the Stonfo Transformer, but they look at it and it's called the Transformer because it has this head system that you can disconnect and connect really, really fast but sometimes people don't have a need for all of those different heads. There's a streamer head, there's a tube fly head, then there's, there's the standard. And a lot of people look at that stuff and it's great, but they've said, geez, I just tie for trout or just smallmouth or maybe some smaller saltwater flies. I don't know if I need all of that stuff. Well, the Stonfo Elite is probably for you because by looking at it, it basically has everything the transformer does except a more standardized set of jaws and they don't, interchange. So because of that, it's a little less money as well. So it's kind of that nice, I don't want to call it a base vice because it's got a lot of really upgraded features, but it fits really nicely in their line for someone who ties just a little bit more than the average person, but they want a vice that's a really high quality tool. Now, I really want to stress that before sharing this video, once I, I realized that Stonfo had this vice, we talked and, and they said, Tim, we'd really like to just see what you think about it. And I said, absolutely. And they sent it to me almost a year ago. So I didn't just tie a couple flies and make this video. I've spent a lot of time tying on this vice. I've actually brought it to fly fishing and fly tying shows all around the country. I've tied on it at those shows. I've done demos with this vice. So I really wanted to make sure that it was something that I could share with all of you and say, hey, do I recommend this? Absolutely. And do I? Yes, I do. It's a really great vice. So what I'm gonna do now is kind of change the camera angle. We're going to put some hooks in this vise, talk about it, see some of the mechanisms, see what I like about it, see a couple things that I think are just okay, and then also, and most importantly, help you make a decision to see if this is the right vice for you. Here we go, let's talk about the Stonfo Elite. So for starters, I wanna point out that it's definitely a very sharp, a very unique looking vice. Whenever I'm tying it, fly tying shows all around the country, people will just come up to me, not because of any other reason than they see a Stonfo vice and it's just unique. It's not something that's seen all over the place. So keep that in mind. It has that, that kind of appeal to it. We'll call it like bin appeal with flies. 
Well, let me walk you through basically some things that I see, some things that I've noticed by you know using this, this vise now for around a year. Well, we'll go from the ground up. There's a pedestal, and this is more of a plastic pedestal. It's got a little bit of a heavy weight to it, but it's not extremely heavy by any means. Now, I know there's some YouTube videos out there of ways that you can actually disassemble the base and add more weight to it for stability. That's one option you have if, if it's not heavy enough for you. Uh, for me, it's absolutely fine. Uh, I know that Stonfo does sell a C-clamp as well. Uh, so many tires that I've, I've tied with over the years just love the, just the extra stability of that. So that's an option, it's a, it's a buy-on option. And then finally, I have another really, really easy option. You know what, if you're paying attention, uh, shoot me an email, my email is listed down below, and ask me what my other option is for providing stability. I got an easy answer for you. Now, looking over this base, um, hopefully you don't see too many of my tying materials left in. I cleaned up a little bit. We have a couple little containers here. Uh, you'll find hooks, beads, all kinds of stuff that just kind of accumulate in here for mine. We have some holes over here. You can place bobbins in these, uh, magnifying you know, lens if you, if you have the right stem size for that, uh, scissors, basically all kinds of tools. Do I use this occasionally? Um, I prefer to have something like a little tool caddy that Stonfo sells that comes out from this so I can just pick it all up and just all travel with me. But if I'm just tying it like in my living room, I might have a set of scissors, maybe uh, something for dubbing loops and a couple bobbins just, just perched in here, kind of ready to go. So it's nice that you have the access there if you want it. Uh, if you have any tools in there that are super high, it could be sometimes tough to kind of move this around depending how much or how often you decide to use the rotary feature. All right, so now let's kind of continue up. As we come up, we have, uh, and this is a typical pedestal base, we have the stem of the vise, and you'll notice there's a little kind of a screw right here. This gets tightened with an Allen key. In fact, they come with two Allen keys. One kind of, I'm not gonna show you the base of this right now, but it goes up through the base to, to lock this, uh, this kind of bushing in place. And then you have a second Allen key to tighten this down really firm so that stem is not gonna go anywhere. Then as I come up the base, I have another adjustment here, and I'll show you from my side of the vise in a moment. And then we have our vise kind of going down. It makes an angle here and back up at my jaws. And this is kind of where all the, the fun really seems to happen because with the jaws, we have the Stonfo 2 jaws. I'll be giving you a close-up of those in a bit, but this is a rotary vise. So whenever you have them calibrated where your jaws basically are in line with your vise, and let's see if I can get them just about there, somewhere around here, and when I have a hook in there and I turn it, it will really just turn on axis. It will stay on that same plane, and gosh, whenever, whenever you see somebody tying in there, using it that way, maybe with the, the rotary features, uh, it looks really sharp. So this is definitely a true rotary vise. Now we have a couple other kind of components that you can see. Uh, I have this little thing right here, and I'll try to give you a close-up of, of it in a little bit. This is called a thread cradle. Basically, it's something that you can just kind of hang your thread on while you're tying if you don't want to have it you know, anywhere kind of, you will say, uh, adjust it with the jaws. There's a jaw adjustment here, and you don't always want to hang your thread on that. So they have like this little cradle for your thread, which is nice. They have a material clip as well. And there's some other accessories that come with the vise you can see down here, including, as I mentioned, you get a couple Allen keys. And then we have this really cool attachment. And I'll get into this in a bit, but it's basically a bobbin, we'll say cradle, whenever you're using the rotary feature, or you can use it as a parachute tool, and it comes with this really handy parachute device. And then finally, you get the directions in the box too. And it's kind of like when you're, you know, if you're into photography at all, they always recommend, read the directions. I recommend the same. Read over the directions for the vise. Now, um, some of the common questions that I receive about vices, can they be used for a right-handed versus a left-handed tire? Absolutely, in my mind, this one can because the main adjustment you're going to be using, you're going to be taking this and you're going to be tightening and loosening it based on what size hook you have in it. And then you finish with this piece down here. So if I would reverse it around, I would have to reach around to do that with one of my hands. Is that possible? Absolutely. There's no question about it. So that's kind of just a general walkthrough with the vise. Now let me show you a few more of its features. I'll zoom in just a little bit. We'll put some hooks in these jaws and then we'll get into some of the accessories. So I'm now sitting as if I was a left-handed tire. Um, is it still possible? Absolutely, I could reach over here to tighten and untighten, swing this way and then start tying. Geez, I don't even know which way to begin because I'm a righty. 
mainly I wanted you to see it from this angle because if you are a right-handed tire, this is kind of what you would see from the vise. Now, a couple little things I wanna point out. I kind of talked about this sleeve right here. That sleeve is nice because it allows you to adjust the height. So you can raise or lower and then tighten the stem in. So that is one definite perk with this vise. Next, you see this knob right here. This is an adjustment. It tightens or loosens into this piece right here. There are ball bearings in there. And if it's really loose, you can see, I'll just try to loosen it. It's pretty easy to spin versus you can really crank it down to the point where it's very difficult to get around. And I'm, I'm definitely kind of forcing it there. I tend to like it so it's around this, so you can kind of move it, move it relatively easy, but it will kind of stay in place wherever you want it. So that's really nice. We've already talked about the material clip. And next, as we kind of work our way down, you'll see that we have some, some areas where we can tighten the, the vise on your side. And that's nice, and that really helps to uh, kind of change the angle that, where you have the jaws. I've seen tires who've tied with just all kinds of crazy angles and whatever is most comfortable for you, and also based on the hook styles. So it's nice that you have the ability to, uh, to adjust at that point. And then finally, as we get a little bit closer to the jaws, or now that we're at the jaws, we have a couple very distinct things that we see. Number one, this is a screw, and that will open or close once you have a hook in place. And it will basically just tighten against it where you want it just kind of tight, not to the point where it's really just cranking down, but just firm. And then you would finish it off by tightening this and pushing it up. So those are some of the working me mechanisms that you are able to see from your side if you're a right-handed tire. And of course you have this little polished knob right here that you can hold on to as you are adjusting this around. Now let's get into one of my favorite parts of these vice review videos. And that's just trying some of my favorite hooks within the jaws. So again, as I mentioned, these are the Stonfo 2 jaws. And they're really intended to cover a wide range of hooks. So if you're someone who's tying nothing but super, super small flies, maybe this isn't the right set for you. Or also maybe if you tie nothing but these giant musky or saltwater patterns, I might point you into another direction. But instead, this is a set of jaws that really can just cover a wide range of, of species and a wide range of hooks. Whenever I think about the styles and the, of, and the species of fish that I'm chasing, this really lines up closely with that. I love to chase species such as trout, largemouth, smallmouth bass, striped bass, both in saltwater and freshwater applications. Um, I also will chase some smaller saltwater species. So whenever I think about those flies, this vise, this set of jaws lines up really well with that. So let me share some of the hooks that you've probably seen in my videos over the years, and you'll see exactly what they look like and the kind of room that you have to tie with on this vise. And the first one, this is a hook you've probably seen quite a bit. Um, you know I love the Euronymph. This is the, the Honic H450BL. Uh, this is a size 16 hook. Um, this is a hook that you will see in my vise quite often, and you can just see it holds really well on this. There's definitely lots of clearance. I have space to kind of move my thread, get my scissors in and out. Um, without a doubt, this hook just works really well with this vise. Now, as I move into the second one, I'm gonna pull up a streamer hook. Let me share with you how to operate this. So I'll just move the jaws a little bit, and there's a screw right here, and as I turn it counterclockwise, you'll see those jaws open. I basically wanna get them open enough to where I can get the next hook in. Once I have it that way, I'll tighten them by turning it clockwise. And I want them so that hook is just resting in there under just a little bit of tension. I don't want to really crank down. Once I'm, I'm in there, it's under some tension. I'm going to tighten this stem down here, push it up, and now my hook is locked in place. You'll see me bend this hook before it po pops out of those jaws. And that's something I want to mention is that if you keep your hooks really close to the tips of those jaws, there is, without a doubt, it's under such tension in there that they it will almost get pushed out your hook will go flying, and then you could also damage your jaws. I mean, you can hurt your eyesight. There's lots of negatives. So make sure, as I mentioned, read the directions for your vise and get those hooks a little bit further down in those jaws. Uh, speaking of hooks, this is a streamer hook. This is an Onic, uh, a Honic H970. It's a size six. Um, this is one of their streamer wave hooks. Love this one. Um, you, see, you, probably, you, know, you see me tie a bunch of streamers with it, and it works really well with this vise. Now let's continue going to larger sizes. So I have a jig hook. This is um, a five aught jig hook, just to kind of show, show you what the, it's gonna look like in this. It's a little bit thicker than that 
that streamer hook from Honix. So I'm just going to open it up a little bit. And you probably noticed I have to place this hook a little bit deeper within there. At that point, tighten it up, allow it to crank down, and now let's see what happens with this one. All right, the hook is bending, doesn't seem to be moving in there. And by the way, I did not test these ones prior. I haven't tied a, a fly on this, this jig hook for a while. I have some smaller sizes, but it holds it very, very well. And then finally, a hook that I have trouble with at times, um, I have tied on these. Uh, this is a saltwater hook by Allen Fly Fishing. It's a 3 aught, and it's a little bit thicker yet, so I have to, again, open it a little bit more to get this one in. And you'll notice I'm keeping it really away from the, the tips of the jaws. I want it a little bit deeper in there, so more of the, the metal of the jaws will grab onto the hook. So once I have that in place, move the stem up. Let's see how this one looks. Mm, all right, this one is not kind of going anywhere either, so that's a good thing to know. So I've tested the whole way up to 3 aught. Now, the one thing that I'll kind of keep in mind when you're tying, if I rotate this now, you'll see it's not on plane. So what does that mean? I mean, if I want this on plane, and I'll go back to, we'll say the, the original Honix streamer hook, because it's a little bit of a smaller one. As I place this one in here, I'm going to try my best to get this in plane. And by being in plane, what that means, I want the shank of the hook to run on the same plane as the main part of the vise. And once I accomplish that, you can see there is very little movement in that. Now, I'm just doing this really quickly for the purposes of this video, but kind of play around with your vise if you have a rotary vise because you really want that running smooth. And as you place different hooks in your vise, it will change. And it's nice that Stonfo kind of gives us the ability to move it based on the hook that we have in there. All right, and finally, come on, you know I just love to play around. Um, let's put a small hook in the vise. Now, I have some really, really, really tiny hooks. Um, including some old Mustad. These are the 277s in a size 32. These are the little gold hooks. No, I'm not putting these in there. They're just, they're too small. Come on, this is more of a, just a funny thing. Um, but I've been fortunate over the years. Uh, I've, I've got my hands on a number of small hooks, including some from uh, David Melhorn in, in Pennsylvania and Harry Hager. He's also from Pennsylvania. They've sent me some smaller hooks over the years. And here is a, uh, a Tamco TMC 518 in a size 32. So let me see if I can tighten this up against the hook and lock it in place. And there we go. Hopefully you're able to see that. You can just see there's a little shank showing right there. Um, and you know what, I'll probably leave this in here because you know I, I tie size 32 hooks all the time. There's <laughs> no question about it. And if you believe that one, I'll, I'll tell you a few other stories. But you can see this, this Stonfo Elite Vice, it definitely, um, it does a great job in tying a range of sizes and if you, you're thinking, hey, I have a hook, I'm not sure if it'll hold this one, you know, shoot me an email, let me know, and I'll try to get some feedback for you and let you know basically my thoughts about it. But think about where I'm tying. I, I, I'm kind of in that 24 is the smallest I really tend to go up to those lower aught numbers. That's about the range of hooks, and this, this set of jaws can handle them. Before I give you my final thoughts on this, uh, let's talk about the, the really neat accessories that are included. And the main major accessory is called a bobbin slash parachute cradle. And it's a really simple mechanism to, to attach. They have a little holder for it right here, uh, just tightens up with, by your hand. And then it has this little bar that goes down and back around. And what's nice about that, you have this little piece that attaches onto it. And the gist is really simple. Say you're tying a fly and you decide that you want to get to the rotary feature and you need to hang your bobbin somewhere. You simply swing this over, hang your bobbin, grab onto the material, and move it back and forth until you get it to the spot where you need to, and then get your bobbin back, slide this out of the way, and continue your tying, and you're off and running. Uh, so that's a really neat feature about it. The other thing that you have the ability to do is actually remove this, have it sit over top, and instead of attaching this piece, you can instead attach this. And this is a pair of parachute pliers. Now, what's neat about this, they're spring-loaded. Um, they have a little rubber coating on them. You can almost just use these as an accessory or as a set on their own, because it's a really nice little set. But what's great, if you tie a lot of parachute flies and you have trouble with the post, this will can hang above, and it can grab onto the post with a little bit of tension and keep that post add attention uh, straight up and down, allowing you to wrap your hackle or whatever else 
around it. So that's another little you know, feature of this that comes into play and something for you to consider. I can tell you that whenever I do use this uh, cradle, I take off this top section. For some reason, I just don't like it being there. Just is a little bit too tall. But I know some people who like to have this bobbin cradle much higher up. Let me tighten that down now. But I tend to keep mine just like this. And then you can simply move it out of the way when you're not using it, swing it back around, holds onto your thread, and then you're off and running. So that's a pretty neat accessory that I wanted to at least make you aware of, um, especially one that is definitely recommended um, whenever you're tying with the rotary feature. And again, as I mentioned, this is something that comes in the box. As we move towards my final thoughts, let me give you the dimensions of this, of the base of the vise. Keep in mind, it's not a perfect rectangle. It kind of slants in a little bit from the bottom and the top. But if I was going to cut out a rectangle, it would be approximately, we'll say, uh, let's go with about seven and three eighths inches long by approximately at its, we'll say at, at the widest, about six and three eighths inches. And the height is anywhere between about one and an eighth inches and about, we'll say one and a half, maybe a hair over one and a half at the back of it. If you need any other specific measurements, by all means, shoot me an email. Now let's talk about some things that I love about the vise. And it really is kind of the the option that you have to kind of adjust it based on your needs. And I really love that. The fact that we can adjust the height, that's a huge perk. The fact that I can control the ball bearings and the ball bearings are super smooth. That's a really great piece of this vise. But I can completely crank it down if I don't want it to move or I can loosen it up and it's really wide open. I just love that we have the ability to adjust that. As I move closer to the jaws, I love that we can change the angle of them. Uh, there are a lot of high-end vices out there, you probably know of some of them, that it's a fixed angle. And that works for a generic hook. But it's nice that if we want to have this really cranked up high because we're sitting on a really tall chair, we can do so. So it's really nice, again, Stonfo gives us the options. And then speaking of options, finally, the set of jaws in here, it's the Stonfo 2 jaws. Um, they really just cover a wide range of hooks, as you saw me test out. And it's nice that, you know, at times I kind of take that for granted that I've had previous vices where I've had to have different jaw sets based on the types of flies I'm tying. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, I have the Stonfo Transformer, and they do have different jaws. And we'll kind of talk about that here in a second. But this Stonfo 2 set of jaws is really, it's just very well done, and I believe it's going to meet the majority of tying needs out there. Now, I'll tell you about the one thing that I would love improved, and it is this material clip. Now, what's nice about the material clip, it's got a spring in it, your materials fit there really nicely, they can come out, it, it works really well for that part of it. But sometimes while I'm tying, I'll push this forward a little bit, and then I'll push it back, then I'll push it forward a little bit, then I'll push it back. And you may notice what's going on here. As I push it forward and I push it back, it unscrews, but it doesn't retighten. So once you've done that a number of times, you can see it gets flimsy. And that frustrates me. I'm not going to lie about that. Um, I've talked to other tires out there, and they've put Loctite there um, just to keep it in place, just because they don't want it to, to move. They want to be able to move this, but they don't want it to unscrew. Now, the reason it can unscrew is kind of twofold. Uh, there is, as I mentioned before, a thread cradle on it. So if you're a left-handed tire, you may want that on your side. So you can unscrew it and switch that around. Also, again, you know, Stonfo gives us lots of options. If you want this in one spot lower, you can see there's an open hole. You can actually unscrew that and place it there, and it's locked in place, and you have it in a different position. For me, it just bugs me that it unscrews and it doesn't stay tight. So that would be kind of the, the we'll, we'll say, one of the major negatives for me, and that's really the only negative that I can think of. When I've talked to some other tires out there, some tires don't like that it's a plastic base. Um, for me, it doesn't bug me. I kind of like the plastic. I think it's got a really clean look to it. Uh, I love that it has these little grooves in it. But I can tell you other tires, they just they want more of a high-end base. So kind of think about that, and, and maybe that will factor into your decision. Because we're not about all you know my original vice, which I have sitting right here. <laughs> this is it. I showed you a picture of it earlier. This vice held a hook. That's really all it does. Now we've got the, to the point where I have this Stonfo Elite vise, and geez, it holds a hook really well. But there are other components to it that you really have to factor in to your decision. And then now let's kind of 
shift one more time and I'll talk about a couple accessories that I would at least consider you looking into if you're going to purchase the Stonfo Elite or for other vices out there. One of them is the Stonfo toolbar. Um, I love this little toolbar. As I mentioned before, you can put your bobbins, some scissors in these little slots that are on the, the pedestal or on the base itself. And it works out okay. But what I love about the toolbar, it kind of keeps everything away from my vise. I can swing it around because it attaches directly to the stem. And it's got this really unique system where the, the, um, all the bobbins will go in at an angle. So whenever it's sitting there, you have them all coming out at angles. You have scissors. You have all kinds of tools hanging in here. Whenever I'm, I'm, do, I'm completing tying demos at various tying shows, it is just, besides the fact that it looks really cool, it's extremely convenient to have a bunch of bobbins just preloaded, all of my tools, and I literally just pick this vise up and walk over to my tire showcase or my featured tire presentation. And it's nice to have kind of everything ready to go. So if you kind of like to move spots with your vise, I would consider having one of these. Now, if you always tie at the same spot at your tying bench and you're not moving a lot, you probably don't need one. But just once you're aware of that, I really like mine. You can probably see it's been well used recently, especially. And then the other thing that I want to at least throw out there is purchasing another set of jaws. Now, this is the Stonfo One set. And I first found out about these through their Stonfo Transformer. And they're very similar to the Stonfo Two, with the biggest difference being this little kind of gully in a sense. And what that little gully does, once you have a hook in there, it allows just more access to the rear of the hook. And I like this for much smaller hooks. We're talking dry flies, uh, smaller nymphs. It just, it, I don't know, it's, to me it's just the best set of jaws in the business. And I can tell you it's a brand new set. Whenever I got the Stonfo Elite, I also got a set of Stonfo One jaws. But guess what? I have never put them in this. Um, the Stonfo 2 jaws are excellent. Now, you're probably thinking, wait a second, you have a Stonfo transformer, they have the one jaws in them. Yes, you got me there. That's probably why I've never transferred them over. Um, but kind of consider that. If you do tie a lot of smaller flies, but you want the flexibility, you can also get this second set of jaws. They're priced pretty reasonably. You can find them across fly shops all over the place. I'll see if I can put a link to them down below. And it's easy to swap out. You can just, you can see there's the adjustment right there. You unscrew that place them in, and you're off and running with another set of jaws. So kind of keep that in mind that you do have the flexibility. And just to kind of give you an update on this set that's in here right now, the Stonfo 2, this is the set that's found on the streamer head for the Stonfo Transformer. So um, whenever I tell you that these are, they're really their main sets of jaws, these are the two right here. And you have the ability to use both within the Stonfo Elite. And then finally, I'll just kind of talk briefly about the price, and I'm not gonna share the exact number in this video. I don't sell vices. I do, you know, I have some links to where you can purchase them down below in the description of this video. But I know these YouTube videos could be out there for one year, five years, 10 years. I, I don't know how long this, this review will be out there, and the price can definitely fluctuate. So keep that in mind, but I can tell you um, it's very reasonable compared to some of the higher end vices based on the options that you get out of this. Uh, and then finally, the last thing I'll probably say to this, my last name's Camisa. This is Stonfo. They're an Italian company. Come on, let's put two and two together. I think you've already heard at the beginning. I recommend this vice. <laughs> and being that they're from Italy, that's just like one more positive. So Stonfo, if you're out there watching, um, you've made a really great one here. And now let me change the camera angle and tell you just a little bit more about this one. Now that you've seen a close-up of the Stonfo Elite, you probably know exactly why I recommended it. It's an absolute quality fly tying tool that really deserves a place on many fly tying benches around the world. Uh, Stonfo, you did a great job with this one. Thanks for kind of figuring out exactly what certain niches of tires wanted, and you kind of put it all together for them in this one. So I really appreciate it. Now, if you have any questions about specific dimensions, about any of the, the things that you saw and you want to know a little bit more about them, by all means, reach out to me. I will do my best to get you an answer. And if not, I will ask Stonfo and I'll see what they can do. Now, remember, they're in Italy. They're in a little bit of a different time zone. So if you do send me an email or something, I will do my best to try to get you that answer. No, I do not sell these vices. So I know a lot of you have contacted me over the years to see if I sell them. I don't, but I can definitely give you a place to go. And if you look in the description of this video, I will send you a couple different places to find some Stonfo stuff. But hey, I think as you probably know, I feature a lot of their stuff in my fly tying videos. And it's not because um, I get paid to do so. 
they don't pay me. It's because they sell and they make and they manufacture some of the best fly tying tools in the business. It's an easy, it's a really easy choice to partner with them and I really think they're doing some great things and I'm sure a lot of you do too. So with that said, if you've had experience with their fly tying tools over the years, please just pause this video for a moment and go down to the comment section, talk about the tool that you've used and what you really loved about it because they make like three or four tools that are just like essentials on my bench and I guarantee a few of you know exactly which ones I'm talking about. So thank you so much for watching this video about the Stonfo Elite Vice. This is just another exceptional tool and if you have any questions or comments about it, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. There are so many vices out there, so you know by all means, look at all of them, line them up, take a quick peek at them. I know it's not so easy to get to fly shops today and just look at all of them at one fly shop. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way, but I am here to help and please send any questions my way. You can email them at tkamisa at gmail.com and I will do my best to help find that perfect fly tying vice for all of you because hey, I found mine, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, with that said, thank you so much for watching this video. If you'd like to watch more like this, you can check them out at troutandfeather.com. I've done a number of different vice reviews. I'll list them down below in the description of this page, and you can find them on my website too. If you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Facebook, on Instagram. Geez, I even have my own email list. And if you want to sign up for it, go to troutandfeather.com, scroll to the bottom, put in your email address, and you will receive just about monthly updates that share some new videos, fly tying and fly fishing tips, techniques, some great pictures, and I even have a brand new guest blogger on those email updates. There is just lots of information coming your way, and it's because I really just, I love to share, but most importantly, you all have given me such great feedback over the years. Thanks for all the YouTube support. Thanks for liking these videos, subscribing. I mean, I'm up to around 21, 22,000 subs, over 3 million video views, and it's because of all you. So thank you so much for, you know, turning those notifications on, showing up for these video premieres and everything else. Thank you, and I hope to see all of you soon.